CompTIA ITF plus Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 5.2 Compare and Contrast Various Database Structures. Relational Databases. A relational database is a structured data system that stores information in tables. A table is comprised of data values stored in a series of columns and rows, where columns align data values vertically and rows align data values horizontally. Using this table structure, each row represents a separate record and each column represents a single field or attribute within a record. Through this table-based structure we can use fields to compare common traits between data elements in each record. Now that we have defined a table, let's talk about the relational part of this database. A relational database is aptly named because it organizes data into tables that relate to each other. These tables have relationships or links between pieces of information, thus allowing multiple tables to correlate data. So how are these table relationships formed? In the example behind me, we have a customer table where we can store information about customers like their first name, last name, and phone number. This table helps us keep all our customer information organized. Now, let's talk about the sales table. Here, we record details about each sale, like who made the purchase, the order number, date of purchase, and the amount. This table helps us track all our sales transactions. So here is our challenge. We want to connect these tables to understand which customer made each purchase. That is where keys will come into play. The customer table has something called a primary key. Think of it as a unique ID for each customer. It's like assigning a customer number to each person. This unique number ensures that every customer record in the customer table has their distinct identity and cannot be confused with any other record. In a relational database, you will find that every table has a primary key. Now, in the sales table, we have something called a foreign key. This is a special kind of key that connects or refers back to the unique identifier in the customer table. This customer table can also be called the parent table in this type of relationship. For our example, the foreign key helps us link each sale to a specific customer in the customer table. When we connect the primary key in the customer table to the foreign key in the sales table, we create a relationship between the two tables. Now, we can easily see which customer made each purchase. So, in a nutshell, a primary key is like a unique ID for each customer in our customer table, and the foreign key is used in the sales table to link each sale to a specific customer. Great, you now know how a relational database works at a fundamental level. Next we will take a step back and look at the overall blueprint for a relational database, referred to as the schema. A database schema is an outline or a blueprint for a database that describes its components and how they work. And a database schema is a critical part of a relational database as it will include items such as table names, fields in each table, the required data type for each field, and the primary keys, foreign keys, and any other data constraints. Wait, why is constraints in red? Because I have not covered this topic yet. But don't worry, I will cover it right now. So, what exactly are constraints in the world of databases? Constraints are rules or conditions that we set for the data in our database. Think of them as the guardians of data integrity ensuring only valid values are entered. There are several types of constraints, and each serves a specific purpose. For starters, you already know one type of constraint. The primary key we just learned about is a uniqueness constraint. A uniqueness constraint ensures that values in a column are unique across all records in the table. Then we have the not null constraint. It's a rule that says a column must always have a value, it can't be left empty. You have no doubt come across this constraint when filling out a web form. There is also the check constraint. This enforces specific conditions on column values. For instance, you can use it to make sure an entry meets a specific requirement before it is accepted into the database. Now these are just a few types of constraints, but hopefully you got the idea. And not just about constraints, but relational databases as a whole. And remember, when you need to store information in a structured manner, there is nothing better than a relational database. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.